Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Welcome to the podcast where we focus on lead generation for real estate agents. My name is Lori Ballin and I have a real estate team here in Las Vegas, Nevada, serving Henderson and North Las Vegas. And all of my real estate leads come from the internet, from web marketing, real estate websites, pay-per-click, and from real estate agent referrals and social media. And I'm out here interviewing top agents across the nation and even out of the country, um, talking about what they do and how they generate a large amount of real estate leads through a particular source. And today I'm here with Robin Mann, and, uh, who got snow today, I understand. And um, yeah. where are you at, Robin, where you got snow today? I, well, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. I also serve the Fort Mill, South Carolina area, but Charlotte, which we get snow like typically twice a year, um we got snow today like schools got closed which i mean literally we get like four flakes and those the schools get closed but um <laughs> but yeah so we're not used to snow we don't have trucks or salt or anything so when it snows it's a big deal so yeah we were shocked to, i mean it's not like anything there's it's all gone now but they they just get afraid for buses and all that good stuff yeah it, that's what happens to us in vegas when it rains <laughs> like nobody knows what the heck <laughs> it's, when it's raining i'm surprised our schools don't close <laughs> they probably should <laughs> All right, so you exactly. serve Charlotte, North Carolina, and Fort Mill, South Carolina. So anybody that has a referral, I'm going to encourage you to remember Robin Mann, who's going to share with us today. Yeah. You're going to talk about your techniques in door knocking. So am I reading your um, bio here correctly that 62% of your business comes from door knocking? Uh, no. So I do door knocks. I, I do door knocking. Um, and I don't know it, whether you wanted me to speak today about door knocking or whether about Facebook. Door um, knocking. Six, okay. Yeah. Um, door knocking. I got my largest client ever from door knocking. Um, uh, tell us about so, that. Tell, tell us about that. It was phenomenal. So I had sold a townhome in this little subdivision. They sold it for like 180. We had 20 offers in one day, had like 42 showings. It was insane. So that told my brain I needed to knock this neighborhood. So, um, because obviously it's a hot commodity. So I knocked the neighborhood and knocked on this beautiful old, older lady's door and she answered the door. Um, I told her, you know, what had just happened and I was looking for homes to sell and was she interested? And she said, of course, she said, yes, I am. Come on in. So um, I don't always go in, but I, I really trust my intuition, read the vibe. It felt good. I didn't feel like I was going to get killed or anything. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> went in and we started talking and she's like yeah I want you to sell this townhome and she said but I really want you to sell the eight townhomes I have um that I own with a partner up in Cotswold what Cotswold is a is an up-and-coming area of Charlotte and so as soon as she said it I thought I mean like I, my knees buckled um kind of lost all the saliva in my mouth because I was like <laughs> this can't be real because we're talking I knew it would be over a million at least um wow just from that moment of statement. So yeah, ended up um, selling it for 1.2 and again, multiple offers and um, then ended up helping her buy a house. Like she was gonna not buy a house and then she called and she was like, you know what, um, I've decided to buy. And so um, one door knock led to about $2 million in sales. Oh, that's going to be the title of this interview. Holy cow, that's an incredible start startup. Uh, yeah. That that motivated yeah. me right there. I'll tell you. So, so <laughs> tell me, okay, so how long have you been um, in real estate? I'm in my fourth year. Oh, fourth year. So you're pretty new. Wow, yes. that's that's really exciting then. And so tell, okay, so you got into real estate and did you just start door knocking because somebody said you should door knock or how did that come to be? Yes, my first, so my first nine months, I, uh, I had another full-time job from eight to five and I did real estate before work, at lunch and after work and then of course all weekend. So I needed business because I didn't want to take the leap of, a full-time real estate position without feeling like I was going to be successful. So if I didn't have an open house available, I decided I would door knock and I just would pick neighborhoods. I just pick neighborhoods that I like or that have good, um, that have good um, sales in there, or it, they just seem like it's a neighborhood that I would want to connect with people. 
like either they have good schools or they're in a good location or um or i know that you know the the, the probability of something listing will sell so uh, yeah i just started knocking um i'm of course i'm with keller williams and they of course that's one of the um avenues that they tell you to, to do if you're comfortable with it and did, I, I make it very personal did you okay. tell me first did you um when it comes to door knocking people a lot of people that i know in real estate including myself would be absolutely completely freaked out to go knock on doors i mean that's just not right. oh you know um and other people right. quite natural at it and then some just figure it out where do you fall in on that spectrum are you are well, you always, naturally not afraid of that of that type of thing? Yeah. No, I'm not afraid. I remember being, you know, in fifth grade selling the um, whatever the school made you sell, so that you could get points, so you could get the prize stuff out of the magazine. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so I remember doing that like way back when. But um, no, I don't ever knock a neighborhood that I feel unsafe in. I don't I have mean, knocked neighborhoods. I don't mean scared like unsafe. I mean more like the the fear of rejection and getting shut down and bothering people. And you just, you just never had any concerns about that. No, because, because it's a mindset. Uh, so for me, I'm not bothering anyone. I'm not soliciting. I'm not selling anything. Uh, I am truly inquiring. I'm trying to be of help. I'm coming from contribution, which is again, another Keller Williams thought pattern, but um, I'm coming from contribution. So my deal is, is I've got buyers that want to be in this neighborhood. And I'm looking for people who want to sell their home. Okay, that, so, so that's I always your approach every time. Always. Okay. Every single time. So like, I, I have, even I have I don't buyers. Have buyers. You say I have buyers in your neighborhood. I have buyers that want to be in your neighborhood. Okay. And looking to find out if you or or if you know or one of your neighbors looking to sell their home. Do you give any specifics, or is that it? I have buyers looking to buy in your neighborhood. I usually try to be as general as possible. If they, um, if they go further, like what are they looking for? Which I, I don't know that I've ever had that. I mean, I've knocked, I knock a lot of, I knock a lot of homes. Um, and I'm, I should say I lock, I knock a lot of homes and I, I have maybe if I, let's say I've knocked, we'll just say low. I know I've knocked way more than this. Let's say if I've knocked a hundred homes, I've maybe had two people ever be rude, like ever. Um, so yes, I always come from contribution. Like I'm, I want to, and or even like, do you want to know the value of your home? But typically, I just say, you know, I, I, if I've sold a home in the neighborhood, I'll obviously say I just sold that home down the street. I know you saw, I know you saw it on the market. Did you come? Did you come? I guess, um, I guess you came. You know, I don't know if you came to the open house, um, but I just try to let them know I've got somebody who wants to be in the neighborhood, and I'm looking to help. So it's all and how, how frequently are you, are, I know you have other sources. You mentioned the 62% is Facebook sphere and door knocking. How often are you actually door knocking? At least uh, two times a month. Okay. Uh, and I should be doing more. Um, I'm working on my leverage so that I can do more. <laughs> yeah, because but, once um, you get busy, the first thing to go typically, right, is lead generation because now you're doing deals, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. I totally. At least it. two times a month. I have a no. It's a non-negotiable that I'm doing it at least two times a month because I know two times a month. Like I need to meet many people, and like some of these really these uh, neighborhoods, I've built relationships. They're like, oh, you're here. You're you still have buyers. I'm like, yep, I'm back. I love what you've done to your plants. You know, your dog looks great. Um, so I really truly try to make a connection with the people when I am um when I'm door knocking, it's not just, Hey, I'm Robin man. Do you know anyone who wants to buy, sell, invest in real estate? Like that's not my spiel at all. My spiel is, um, I knock on the door, I back up, I back up physically like two or three steps from the door so that I'm not all up in their space. Yeah. I've heard uh, that's, I a, make that's a strategy, a, a very purposeful strategy to back up when you knock on a door. Yeah. yeah Cause then you're not like, so in their, in their face, you know? Um, so I back up and I try to notate the house as I'm walking up. Like, do they have pretty flowers or, or do I love what they've done on the porch? Or if I hear a dog, I try to look at the dog when it comes to the door and instantly I try to make some form of connection. So, and I might even lead with that. I might, I, usually I'll say, Hey, I'm Robin Mann with Keller Williams, but then I might go straight into, Oh my gosh, your dog is so cute. What is he? 
and try to get them to be in conversation about something about their porch. Oh, that I just saw that, you know, pillow set at Lowe's and I was thinking about getting it. I love seeing it on this porch. Um, what else are you going to add to the porch to make that color pop? You know, just try to engage them in some conversation. Um, you know, ask them about the dogwood tree or whatever. Like I just really, truly pick out something yeah. to connect. Just like you would, uh, just then, like you, it's just like you would on a listing appointment. First thing you're going to do when you come in is you're going to try to create some sort of rapport, find something in common from a picture or something on the wall or the animals or so same idea. Same exact idea. Then we, then I usually kind of laugh and say something like, um, okay, not here about the dogwood tree. <laughs> um, I'm here because uh, I've got buyers who want to be in the neighborhood. They love the neighborhood school. And uh, so do you know anyone that's looking to sell or are you yourself looking to sell? And they'll say yes or they'll say no. Um, but then I try not to even just leave it there. Like if they say no, I try to find out, you know, can I get their email so that I can do um, a CMA for them uh, so that I can put them in my database and I can build that relationship. Um, are you carrying an iPad or what do you, how are you get, gathering info? Just my phone. Oh, your phone. Okay. Just to carry a notebook. And, um, I don't do that anymore. I just carry my phone and I have the notes on my phone. Um, and I just type them in and it even let's say like I, I, um, I knock on a house and it goes nowhere. Maybe I've met the person. I will like go back and make notes. That's, I think that's the key for door knocking is to make notes. Um, as you leave, well, one to make the connection, but like, let's say you get nothing, but you've met the person. Um, so here's a story on that. Uh, the woman said the woman answered the door she had like a big giant bandage on her arm and i was like oh wow like that does not look happy and she's like yeah i just had shoulder surgery and i was like wow so we talked about that a little bit she doesn't want to sell our house she doesn't want a cma so i got nothing nothing mm -hmm. i got nothing from her but what i got was i know she had shoulder surgery and i know her address and i know i can look up her her name on tax records so I wrote her a card, I looked up her name, got her, wrote a card, you know, a get well card, threw my business card in there and, you know, would love to, to talk with you whenever you're ready to sell your house. So that happened like in a, in the spring, uh, last spring, like last, um, April and she had no interest in selling. And then we listed her house and sold it this fall. Wow. So and Because you took the time was personal and send her a card and show that you paid attention and cared. Exactly. Yeah. Would you, what are you, when you're making all these notes after you get back with your phone, are you transferring them to a database of some sort or do you just continue to use your notes? Oh yeah, I know. I know I'm a, I'm a beast on my database. So yeah. So as I, like I'll write the notes then I email it to myself, um, from my notes section, I'll email it to myself and, um, um, I email it to myself, and then once I get home, I, yeah, I enter them into the database. Um, what are you using for a database? What's your system? I use Realty Juggler. Realty Juggler is $99 a month. If you mention my name, then we both get a free month or something. But um, I, used, it's, yeah, I, used it's very, that. I used to use that database years ago. Yeah, I love that. Um, it's a great database. And for $99 a month, you can't beat it. So um, it's a great uh, a great resource. So, um, okay. So you're door knocking right. and when you, when you go to pick a neighborhood, do you set any kind of goals? Like today I'd like to knock on this many doors. Do you, do you ever track like how many doors it actually takes to get to a contact or to an appointment? Or do you just kind of do a time span and say, I'm going to knock for two hours or how do you measure that or set goals around that? Typically I do a time span and I'll, I'll even do a, a quick time span. I'm like, all right, I've got 15 minutes. I'm going to, um, I'm going to knock as many doors as I can in 15 minutes. But the bonus is, you know, if you do one door and you get a lead and you spend the whole 15 minutes, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I love but, the, I love that you so, said that though, because if in case anybody else didn't hear that, that was a huge takeaway right there. If you've got 15 minutes, you you don't have to have two hours or three hours or 500 doors or a hundred doors. You just got 15 minutes. You're going to go door knock. That's fantastic. Right. Yeah. And that's the way 
Well, I have a tracking system for myself that I need to, that I have to do uh, to keep myself accountable. So I make myself contact 20 people a day, whether it be via text, via Facebook, door knocking, whatever it is. Um, I, I give myself 20 minutes or 20 contacts a day. And so if I haven't done that, if I'm at 15 and it's eight o'clock at night, then I got to get on, I got to get on something. Now there are days where I'll only do 18. So the next day I'll do 22, but, um, are they are those new are those new contacts, Robin, or are those can you touch base with the contact you already have? It can be both. Okay. I try to put new uh, every day. I try to be intentional about putting new ones in there in some capacity. So at least uh, at least five of the twenty are new. Okay. The other fifteen might might be database nurturing. Okay. So you're at least trying to get five new ones, but no matter what, you want to talk to an average of twenty contacts a day. Correct. Okay. So you got 15 minutes, you, you, you jump on, you go and you go door knock and, or you have other avenues. Is there, is there anything else when it comes to door knocking? I noticed on your little pre-interview here, we did that you get, you got some advice that you would give people that are starting off with door knocking. And one of those, you said, be authentic and not salesy, which it sounds like that's what you're saying kind of what, by coming from contribution and saying, I've got buyers. You're not that you're not just Hey, I'm with Keller Williams. Do you want to tell your right. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I'd be authentic, but then also know, like know your neighborhood. So if you, if there's a gas station coming in, be versed on that. Or if there's a school rezoning, be versed on that because they're going to want to discuss that. So like I do pick, I, I do pick random, random neighborhoods on occasion just because I'm like, well, I know that neighborhood's hot. I'm going to knock it, but I'm really good at winging it and saying, you know, I'm not clear on that fully, but let me research it and get back to you. I do that on occasion, but I'm, be I feel better and more confident when it's a neighborhood where I know that when they come at me with, what do you think about the gas station coming in? Is that going to hurt our values? If That's I haven't, neat. if I've already researched that, it's, I, I think what you just said is another huge takeaway for actually any type of lead generation that we're doing in real estate where we're targeting something hyper local or geographic farming or specific neighborhood or area. The more we know the homes in the area, what is sold in the area, what new construction is coming in, what that big pit is and, and the side that they suddenly started digging, how that's going to affect exactly. their home values, right? That's huge. Yes. It is huge. It is huge. And it, it, um, it makes, it gives you credibility. It gives you, um, validity. And so, yeah, I think, you know, I, I never try to be salesy, but I try to be real. And, um, and I think part of that is, is knowing what's important to them. You need to know that that gas station is coming so that you can, you know, get them more information on it. Um, and that, but if you're let's say they ask you something your way it's way out of your zone your wheelhouse you've got nothing on it <laughs> so you know what i'm so glad you asked that i'm going to research that this afternoon and get it to you get you more information on it like yeah and that's your opportunity to get, to get their email to get their contact information right so you, are, you can are use you, your lack of knowledge to your advantage <laughs> are you geographic farming any of those are you doing anything else besides door knocking are you backing it up with any kind of direct mail or sponsored events or anything yet no, I'm so, um, I'm so organic. I'm so organic. Like I do Facebook organically. I don't do any ads. I do door knocking organically. I mean, not that, that any of that is not organic. I just, I'm cheap. I'm really cheap as well. Um, but like last you lead year, with so, revenue, right? You're leading with revenue. Exactly. <laughs> um, 14 million in sales last year, 56 transactions. So I just haven't done any, um, any, um, invest i haven't just done any investments on the money because wow. um i just want to do it this way that's a huge thing too because i think a lot of people are under a, a false impression that they have to start off in their business with some large amounts of money to go out there and buy business and it's actually the opposite right we want to be create right. we want to be lead generating we want to be leading with revenue without dollars and costs attached to them as much as possible especially in the beginning and then add in marketing and pay-per-click or, or direct mail or exactly. because that's that you're going to I'd love to do that. I need you to teach me all that because I don't know that yet <laughs> that I can um, do <laughs> yeah no but yeah you don't have to like a lot of people get freaked out they're like oh I have to have a pretty shiny glossy flyer to go door knock or a door hanger or a goodie bag no you don't you no. need you and a smile and and a willingness to connect with people and a willingness to go walk and do the work um 
I have another colleague down in Columbia, South Carolina. She's a beast at door knocking. She takes her son and they make a day of it and it's beautiful and fun. And um, so I got inspired by her too, by doing the door knocking. So yeah, no, it's I a would, great way to do business. I would think some sort of consistency. You're at the point now where you're, you, you've got a big business and you're doing a, a lot of transactions. So it's, you've got several sources now of lead gen, but I, I would think when somebody's just getting started, one of the one of the pieces of advice I often give people when they're just getting started is pick something and do it consistently. Even if you're not the yeah. best at it, even if you don't know what you're doing yet and you got to kind of fake it till you make it and figure it out on the fly, get out there and do it religiously. Do it systematically through a process and consistently and don't stop. I think that consistency wins every time, even over. I think you're right. Right. I think entirely. Yeah. And I do, I do believe like follow up and consistency and then just being smart. Like there was a guy in our office, he had three spiral bound notebooks loaded. I mean, just loaded with door knocking notes, but he never did anything with them. No, he never followed up. <laughs> he never, he just wrote the stuff down, you know, knocked on this door, met Betty, but he never, he never went back and talked to Betty or, or sent her a note or anything. So, um, that's where the system comes in, right? That's where the system and process right. comes in. Yeah. Exactly. And so it doesn't sound like... Hours. Go ahead. I said he just wasted his hours. Like, he just... Um, there's no... I mean, he just wasted his hours. He doesn't have any way to follow up. He's not doing anything to to further his business. Like, he, he just... He, I, I really... I was like, I can't believe you did that. Like, he's got he's got so much business sitting right there in front of him. And he he didn't utilize it. Yeah, I see that all the time. I see that a lot with open houses, people sitting in the open house. They put the signs up, but they only put four signs up instead of strategically mapping out the areas to put, you know, put them on all the corners. And then people come through and they're not talking to them and they're not having them having them ready right. for anything. And they're coming in the door and out the door without a big conversation or worse, they're collecting the data when people come in and then they're not following up. They're not doing anything after the fact. Exactly. They feel like they're going through the motions of sitting the open house, but you, and that is the consistency key is being there, but then you want to have a system and a process for what happens now. What do I want exactly. to happen when I, when I door knock or have this open house or lead, do my pay-per-click marketing? How many leads do I hope to get and how many of those would I like to convert and how, how am I going to get them there, right? So there's a, right. that's where your database comes in and, and a system and process around that, but Man, somebody can, I, I'm always telling people that, you know, they listen to every every lead generation source and every shiny object. They want to go buy this or go do this. And they, all of this works if you work it at a high level. If you exactly just commit and be consistent, whether it's Facebook or open houses or sphere, door, building websites, sitting mall kiosks, whatever it is, it all works. I know a girl just killing it right now on the, on the new next door social network. I know somebody else killing it on Instagram. Oh. I know somebody else is still right. killing it for sale by owners and expireds and right. Right? yeah, it's just doing it at a high level. That's why, that's why I was drawn. I wanted to talk to you because I think door knocking is one of those things still that there is a lot of fear around and there's a lot of people that'll say it doesn't work anymore or that people that don't answer their doors. And, you know, I think it's, it's, it's nice to hear that this is still an Avenue that works. It doesn't require a lot of money up front. It just requires time and the commitment and the right. process for how you're going to cultivate those relationships. Because if you hadn't stopped and sent that woman a card who is in the cast, you wouldn't have gotten that list. Right. Exactly. Now and people are really nice if you approach them in the right way. I think people are, like I said, I've probably had two. If you said, if you said, I've done a hundred doors, which I have, I've probably done a thousand doors, but yeah, maybe. I mean, like no one has been mean. Even the no soliciting neighbors. A lot of people get uh, intimidated by that. They're like, well, it says no soliciting. I'm not selling anything. I'm I'm introducing myself and seeing if they need help. Like I'm not, and well, that's, that's what I've said. Point. That, What's that? I said that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. I would I would naturally avoid the no soliciting, but you're not selling anything. You're there to offer to tell let them know you have buyers in the neighborhood. Right. You're not you're not trying right. to sell them anything. Do you have you found yeah. that there's any better time to knock on doors than than another? Yes. Uh well it really again it's um I've done it in the middle of that well, weekday afternoon and you get the stay at home moms, which is great because they always like to talk. <laughs> um, 
but then weekends are great because everybody's out home they're out in the yard so like I take full advantage of the guy in the yard cutting the grass like I don't interrupt him while he's cutting the grass but I know he's home and most of the time if you walk into his yard he's gonna say hi yeah. so um so yeah weekends are great if it's a if it's a nice weekend like we get our weather here is fantastic so we could you know I can door knock eight months out of the year at, at, and it not be uncomfortable weather so um I mean, I guess weekends are probably best, but then weekdays, um, weekdays have been good too. Like when I knocked on her door, it was a week, it was a weekday, uh, afternoon. So, so essentially any time that you're willing to do it, go right. Yeah. Anytime you have go. Yes. Because and either leave- it's going to, what's that? Sorry. There's a lag over, over each other. Is there, when you knock on a, um, on a door and somebody doesn't answer, do you leave anything on their door? I do. I leave. Well, it it depends. Um, the majority of the time, yes, I will leave my business card. If it's a hot neighborhood, yes, I will leave my business card. Some people are like, oh, you're just throwing it away. But I have received several phone calls where they're like, hey, uh, I got home and your card was on my door. What do you need? Um, <laughs> and that gives me, you know, I've got a phone number and I've got, you know, um, a person to talk to. So um, you don't have to leave a card but you can and like if there's something you it's really about just being aware of your surroundings like if you see a big blue baby ribbon on the door well there you go you can look up their tax things you got their address you know they just had a baby send them a congratulations card um and you can just you know the I mean the card can say was it knocking in the neighborhood saw the baby blue ribbon congratulations um if your house is too small now call me you know yeah. um <laughs> Yeah. So not? absolutely. Yeah, it's just about being aware of your surroundings and, and utilizing the things you have there. So the last question you said when I asked you about um comp- about the your biggest challenge in door knocking, you said competing with a bunch of other real estate agents. Did you mean specifically door knocking or do you mean in real estate in general? Um, um probably in real estate in general. I mean, as far as door knocking we have a lot of we have a lot of real estate agents that do the farming that do the postcards yeah um or you know the shiny pretty postcards and so you know those are there and the magnets are on the fridge and um but what i have found is um i've received this comment i mean a significant amount of times where they say um wow like you took the time to knock like you're the one out here doing the legwork like that's impressive like something along those lines so it makes they see that you're doing something different because you're you're out there doing the legwork but yeah i mean charlotte we have over sixteen thousand agents in the charlotte metro area so um the competition here is stiff yeah (laughs) so you have to do something to be different or you're gonna get swallowed up all right, so you you acknowledge that there is competition, but there's not as much doing what you're doing, and that's how you're standing out, which is always the key, right? Find the opportunity, find the gap, and fill it because that's how that's how you're going to exactly. stand out. All right, Robin, well, thank right. you so much for joining me today. I think that there's a lot of takeaways here that people people can learn, and and I think the main one is just get out there, even if you've got 15 minutes, get out there and do it. I love your your. Um, adding 20 contacts a day to your database, Ho- hopefully five of them are new. That's fantastic. Um, and just Thank be you. consistent and authentic. So anybody, if you've got referrals for Charlotte, North Carolina, Fort Mill, South Carolina, keep Robin Mann in mind. She's with Keller Williams and would love your referrals. So any leaving words for him, Robin? Um, just go have, just go make it enjoyable. Like, go you don't have to put on a fancy suit just go put on go be you and go be enjoyable and I would say that in anything you're doing like um if a fancy suit is you great you could do that too but uh I think for me I think any success I've had is because of authenticity and because that's what I hear from my clients like we liked you because you were real or we liked you because you um you weren't stuffy you know so I, yeah just go be yourself and make it so like I love my job and I say that a lot like one to convince myself but one because I do love my job <laughs> yeah so uh, you know just just love it and go do it and don't be afraid like people people are actually nicer than we give them credit for I would say 90 percent of the time that's fantastic that's great advice thank you so much I respect your time and I'll let you get back to your to your snow melts out there <laughs> <laughs> 
And um, well, I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. All right. We'll talk to you later, Robin. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks.